In this episode, I have a virtual buffet of tasty nuggets of information that I pulled from the Splinterlands Town Hall today. If you're interested in Splinterlands, you're not going to want to miss this. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here, saying thanks for dropping by. Well, there was a big town hall today. It didn't last a whole long time, longer than usual. However, they packed it full of all kinds of information. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. I've got two tasty slides here, just packed full of nuggets of information for you. Um, so let's just jump right in. First of all, what's immediately coming up? Okay, we were talking about this for the last few weeks, but we didn't really have a date on it. Now we have a hard and fast date. The new rewards, uh, ranked re rewards will go into play on April 2nd. Okay, that means that chests as we know them are coming out of the game. Your daily chests and your season chests will be gone at that point. Okay, now along with that, our next season, we're coming to the end of this season, our next season will be slightly extended. Okay, and then um, to coincide with the April 2nd uh, patch and maintenance. Okay, so uh, the next item I want to talk about is, well, if chests are being removed, what's happening? Okay, so we've talked about this a little bit before, but we didn't really have any terms to use. Okay, the term now is called glint. Okay, and it's going to be put into a piece of artwork with a gem of some sort. Um, but glint will be what you accrue when you win matches okay and uh, as far as what they said today uh, unless the mass unless it gets going and they figure out the math needs to be differently it will be directly equal to the rewards points that you get currently when you win a match okay and another note on that is the glint can be saved up so if you have a larger item in the store that you're say that you would like then you can save up for it <clears throat> and you don't have to immediately immediately use those Okay, so uh, the new reward store will go into play on April 2nd. You will be able to buy potions. You will be able to buy energy. You will be able to buy merits. You will be able to buy card chests uh, with your glint. Okay. These card chests, uh, it's still in flux exactly how they're going to go into the game. But um, people had mentioned that it would be nice if uh, we could save up and have a high cost on a card. Say, for instance, all you really need is legendaries uh, for your soulbound cards. Then you can save up. That chest is going to be uh, high dollar. It's going to cost a lot of glint, right? But it would have guaranteed legendaries in it. Um, at this point, the chests I believe that they are going to put in um, would still be like the chests we receive on various levels. With uh, you know, as the levels of the chests go up, they obviously would cost more. They would also have higher percentage to get better cards, but it would still be a random roll, right? Um, so at this point, my takeaway was it's still in flux and it may change, um, but still expect that to go live on April 2nd. Okay. So um, also a big surprise was that the daily focus will be going away on April 2nd. Once again, a lot of things happening on April 2nd. Um, Matt was talking about it and uh, basically his feelings that, you know, my takeaway was that uh, they, they, the team feels like there's really no value uh, in that system right now. So they want to re rework it. They don't have a new system to put into place yet as far as providing something for you to do on a daily basis f for a quest to earn extra points or what have you. They don't have anything to fill the void, but daily focus will be going away on April 2nd. Okay. Um, another thing he mentioned uh, as far as um, will be in the store, limited edition titles that will be tradable. Now these are going to be high dollar, okay? So these are for for people that play on the high end. They're going to have a lot of glint to spend, and even uh, he kind of uh, inferred that even those uh, people on the higher end would probably have to save up for a while to be able to afford these titles. But this is going to be one of those few things you can buy with glint and be able to trade it, okay? Immediately, right? Um, now there was still a little bit of discussion about uh, down the road being able to trade uh, the soulbound cards. Which, ha which would have a cost, right? But it would also have to wait until the next set of soulbound cards 
uh, came out before that could happen. But Matt talked about that a little bit, and he's into that uh, as far as, you know, down the road uh, when a new set of Soulbound cards comes out, he doesn't necessarily want that old set of Soulbound cards to be out of the reach of somebody coming in new to the game, you know. But if you're going to sell those cards or trade them or what have you, you're going to have to pay a cost. Uh, no numbers mentioned and, and no details. It has not been worked out yet. Okay. Now, uh, next up, the DEC and grain market is in the QA phase and possibly April 2nd, but they were a little bit, uh, you know, kind of soft on that. So, but he did feel comfortable by saying that it would be within April sometime. So you can probably expect the uh, DEC grain market in April sometime, maybe April 2nd. And finally on this slide, the Gladius cur uh, card burn switches to merits from DEC on April 2nd. Another big thing happening on April 2nd. So if uh, I saw a few people uh, uh, talking about in their videos, a few other YouTubers talking about uh, the possibility of burning uh, Soulbound cards um, and or Gladius cards, um, especially go the higher end legendary gold foils, which are worth quite a bit of DEC, I think like 10,000 or something like that. Um, if you want to do that and take advantage of that, you need to do it before April 2nd. Otherwise, it's going to switch over. From then on, you can still burn the Gladius cards, but you're going to get merits instead. And in case um, you know, you've know you got a, uh, some Gladius cards that you don't necessarily need, you can burn them, get more merits, uh, buy more uh, Gladius card uh, chess, and um, get some different cards. Okay. Now, that list was what's in the very immediate future of Splinterlands. This list is upcoming, and it's not necessarily way out in the future, but it is in the future. Um, and uh, evidently, he felt pretty uh, comfortable about the team about talking about it. Um, so they put it, you know, a lot of times they, you know, if they're not comfortable about something coming out or on decisions, they won't exactly talk about it on Town Hall, which I think is good because once you start talking about it, people want to hold you to it. So anyway, these were the items uh, on the upcoming work list that he mentioned, and I thought they were pretty juicy, so I wanted to mention them. Okay, so the new, uh, we were just talking about Soulbound and Gladius cards. The new Soulbound rewards card set uh, will be coming out in the not so near, or, you know, within a few months. So I, I, he didn't put a date on it, but I would expect it within 2024 sometime. No date set, so we'll see. But a uh, new Soulbound rewards card set is on the horizon. Okay, next thing up was one click rentals, uh, set rentals. So uh, Matt, um, kind of expanded upon this idea that he likes this idea as part of the um, the, new, uh, the player experience, especially the new player experience. Uh, he would like, uh, and he thinks it's a good idea. I, yeah, I think it's a good idea too. Um, as far as uh, a new player comes in and um, goes through the tutorial and gets up and running in Splinterlands, and then they're able to go in and rent a set a complete set that will get them up and running uh, in bronze or silver or what have you. Um, probably several different rankings, uh, well, you know, uh, different power sets uh, as far as how much you want to rent out. Obviously, it would be cheaper to buy, uh, you know, kind of a lower lower end set or, you know, rent out. But either way, he likes that idea. Um, also, he listed, and this is very nice because um, up until a week or two ago, uh, he hasn't, they hadn't really mentioned work on the mobile app as far as I know. But I've been talking about this once in a while on videos because I think it's a very important thing to have a good mobile app for your game. Um, because as we know, there are a lot more people in this world that have a phone or a tablet than have a computer, a laptop, what have you. So if you want to expand that market, it's really my thinking that you really need to be on mobile. So either way, uh, he said that's on the list. Um, and that um, would occur before they go into a situation. There were several items that he listed that he thinks need to be worked on and worked out, ironed out, before they go into a phase of serious advertising of the game, which once again I've talked about in the past. But uh, he made some good solid points. Uh, either way, the mobile app work was one of those items that needs to be worked on. Um, now, another thing that was a, a surprise to me that I hadn't heard about was he planned a promo card event for the Bitcoin halving in a month or so. So uh, there, uh, you can expect a promo card event. There was no details really um, other than he kind of gave a top-down view of his take on the rest of the year. And he said that there should be a total of 10 promo cards over 
2024. And I think, uh, you know, it, these will be split between rare and legendary, kind of like the, the past few have been, where you can, you know, depending upon your level of participation, you can get rares or you can get legendaries. Um, but he expects those to be dual, dual element uh, type cards, which should be very cool. Um, okay, next up, um, work on the battle helper and bot issue. So they're not blind to the fact that... Um, people are complaining about battle helpers and bots still running in modern. But the problem is that being able to detect it and being able to do something about it are two different things. So without expanding upon that too much, uh, my takeaway from his statement on that was um, he wants to be able to put it up before the DAO and see if the DAO will fund um, a team or some some people to that are specialized in being able to detect the battle helper and bots and actually um, take action on it and know exactly what to do. Um, so uh, I think that's my main takeaway there. So um, yeah, so they they are planning on working on the battle helper and bot issue, and um, he's going to assign a small team uh, to work on nodes in Q2. So that's a good thing. Uh, we hadn't really heard anything up to this point. Uh, nodes have just kind of been out there in the ether. Node holder license holders have just been kind of collecting their their uh, vouchers and their SPS and just kind of twiddling their thumbs. Um, but he has uh, noted that he uh, plans on assigning a small team to work on it in Q2. Um, that's about all he said on that. Um, now, this kind of goes into the battle helper bot issue, but it's the modern match liquidity due to the recent changes. Um, and he was talking about that as uh, a lot of uh, YouTubers have been talking about lately since the big change has happened. Um, the problem is that in modern, uh, I don't play in modern, but in modern, there's just very low match liquidity at certain points of the day, right? So there's, there's a lot fewer people playing, so it's hard to find matches, right? Um, so um, one of the possible, they're going to be looking into this and seeing what changes could occur, what would help. Uh, obviously, we're still in a period where um, uh, the other problem, quote unquote, problems um, that um, are occurring from the recent changes are still in play. Uh, obviously, we need to wait. Uh, you know, we're just coming through the first season, so they had uh, guessed that it would take at least about two seasons to iron those things out. But um, match liquidity is is another issue on the table here that they got to work work on. Um, one of the ideas he had was possibly, and this is kind of weird, but possibly, you know how other games uh, have actual bots run by the game, where if there's low match liquidity, you play against a bot run by the game um, of various difficulties, depending upon where you're at in the difficulty spectrum, right? So that was just an idea that they're thinking about, and he threw it out there. Uh, nothing set in stone. It was just an idea. So, um, and uh, lastly on my list, um, the fourth conflict airdrop is coming up and it, uh, well, it's, it's not the next one, but it will be the one after that, right? Um, and he mentioned it's a legendary summoner. So he's trying to keep, you know, keep the hype up, you know, uh, get everybody hyped up, you know, uh, beef up your battle wagons going forward. I believe he said at that point, it may be um, 275 as far as a guaranteed uh, drop uh, for that, but uh, don't help me uh, hold hold me on that. I do remember that he said that the first airdrop was 200 for a guarantee, but he said that it sh probably should have been 225. But either way, um, the fourth airdrop will be a legendary summoner. And in case you missed it, this uh, airdrop coming up, the immediate next up airdrop, Kai, um, somehow got into packs this last week, uh, and it was noted that people were pulling Kai from a pack. Um, uh, from Rebellion Packs, that is, um, but they fixed that issue pretty quickly. Uh, I don't think that they, they didn't pull them back from anybody. Um, in fact, I think they told everybody that, to let them know if they were having a problem when they were playing with them. Um, I don't know exactly the, the exact situation there. Uh, if you've got a Kai, go ahead and leave in the comments uh, what you think about it, if you've used it, uh, if you can't use it, what have you. Okay. 
Well, this has been Bronze Dragon. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me. I do appreciate your time. Please check out all the YouTube streamers I've left in the show notes. Uh, please drop by, subscribe to everybody, like, comment their videos. Um, the more we take these actions, the more we can bring Splinterlands up in the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side.